Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Hey there everyone, Miles so from all the way from Kid Robot in Miami here, and welcome to Tales of the Tape. A season of floor wrestling games for the ultimate nostalgia rush. Before we begin, let's introduce our first contender. Introducing first, all the way from Bashford Terrace, he is a former wrestler on the ICW banner. Here's Ian the Sharpshitter Harley! This time, I review an absolute classic for the N64 library. Will this game kick off this series in a high score? Without further ado, let's ring the bell, let's find out! Well guys, get some popcorn and a nice comfy seat, it's time for story time. When the little gift from James to James, to keep him positive, with the anniversary of his accident looming, two members of staff got into another argument over who has the better taste in classic wrestling games. Fortunately enough, James was in the very same building, purchasing a 5 pound Xbox voucher with the amount of classic Bethesda games released on the Xbox app for PC. See games like Return to Castle Wolfenstein, Heretic, Hexen, etc, etc. Obviously, he intervened and offered to be the arbitrator and assigned yours truly to do the reviews. With all of this aside, on with this review. The mid to late 90s was a golden era in professional wrestling with two major headline wrestling organizations which was grappling one another for dominance. On one side there was World Championship Wrestling or WCW. WCW was founded by Ted Turner in 1998. On the other side we had the World Wrestling Federation or WWF founded by Vince McMahon in 1953. The competition between these two companies are known as the Monday Night Wars. In terms of the gaming industry, Nintendo's and the world's first 64-bit console, the N64, was dominating the market with a lot of classic games to boot. For example, Super Mario 64, F-Zero X, and this classic title. This game was the spiritual successor to the genre-defining WCW vs NWO World Tour. You pick a wrestler from a roster of wrestlers which are now seen as icons in modern day wrestling. For example, Hulk Hogan, Sting, Goldberg and more and battle your way through various opponents to become the champion. The accessibility scores are as follows. To get the ball rolling, visit Looney Game at 10. Each character has four outfits which can be changed on the fly with one of the four C buttons on the N64 controller. So that way, a player with a visual impairment will be able to experiment who wants controlling which character even in a mirror match. So a player with a visual impairment will be able to play this game with no issues. Next up, on ability to get a 10. Due to the size limitations of an N64 cartridge, there is very little spoken dialogue except for a referee. Making an odd combat, for example, counting a player out, counting during a pinfall, or a rope break. All the other dialogue that a referee says is text based, so a player with a hearing impairment will be able to play this game with no issue whatsoever. Next up, mobility, I scored a 7.5. The controls can be fully customized via the options menu, so you can tailor whichever button layout is suitable for your environment. On the other hand, the only criticism that I have of this game in terms of this particular category is like all the other games on the M64, is the sheer size of the controller. The controllers are too large for a player with mobility impairments. Apart from that, this game is highly accessible for a player with a mobility impairment. Last but certainly not least, gameplay gave a 9. For its time, this game is quite revolutionary. Wrestling games before this title was very complex. To perform a certain move, you would have to enter a complex combination of buttons, similar to a traditional fighting game. And 
fantasy game where pretty much all the characters on the roster are grapplers, for example zombies, this mechanic is a little too complex for a beginner. This game and its predecessor, World Tour, was the solution for this. To perform a certain move, the player must press the grapple button. Holding the grapple button will perform a different move. By the way guys, more on that in just a jiffy. Seriously Tails, you would still be using Jiffy. Hey, screw you. I used to be a US citizen, don't you know? String goes for striking your opponent. Pressing will perform a soft strike, while and holding the button performs a heavy strike. This mechanic made this game deviate from the norm at this time of release. However, in terms of gameplay, this is where the biggest gripe I have with the game in terms of match types, only single man, tag team, and battle royale, none of the Fortnite variety, of course. Plus, however, the game does get a bit repetitive after a long play session. In summary, WCW vs NW World Revenge is a must own for all N64 owners. The control system implemented in this game was revolutionary for the time. The game is a lot more fun when you have your friends around and over to your house battling it out on the same couch and console. If you happen to have an N64 gathering dust in the basement or attic, this game can keep the family entertained on the run up to Christmas. And the overall score is a massive 91.25%. And this game kicks off the series off on a very high note. Miles tells Perp the assistant manager of DGR plays all the way from Kid Robot in Miami out. Low out, Spartan Legion.